there any kind of changes or addition? Um, we're going to be, I'm just going to step up here so everybody can read real quick. Yeah. Um, we will be deleting the Green Mountain ATV uh, riders proposal to the town. They have uh, uh, decided to withdraw that proposal. Um, they're, they're going to resubmit one, uh, hopefully by May 10th, and that will be moved to the, um, excuse me, to the, uh, the, the May 17th agenda, providing that they submit something to us. Okay. We have two work in the right of way permit requests, one on Larson Highway, one on the Moon Road. Okay. And then um, I'm going to ask the uh, select board to appoint Joey Marshall as an agent to convey real estate for the Pleasant View Cemetery. And I'm going to ask uh, that the board appoint an agent to convey real estate uh, for an electrical right away. Okay. Okay, those are all under new business. Yes, so one deletion, the ATV, um, two right away permits, uh, and two uh, agents to convey real estate. Okay. All right. Next, uh, coffee trust meeting. Welcome, Gloria. Welcome, Dick. So we have in front of us uh, Leslie Schuster. Are you with us this evening, Leslie? Yes. There. Go ahead. You have the floor. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> So again, my name is Leslie Schuster. I'm here representing the Lamoille County Stargazers, which is a community group of amateur astronomers. Uh, but I'm also a teacher, a science teacher at People's Academy. And so we're making this um, proposal or this application on behalf of the group. Um, this group has been helping us to restore the observatory. It's 90 years old this year. <laughs> and so it's operational as it is right now. Um, however, there's some crumbling things <laughs> that need to be repaired and uh, need to be prepared, uh, repaired in a way that uh, this job will last another 90 years. And so we received bids from seven uh, area masons and the one that we're um, proposing is one that sort of came in the middle of the road price wise, but um, we also were most excited about this person, Duffy Gardner is his name. Um, because he also seemed the most enthusiastic about the project and um, also the historical aspect of it. He seemed most aware of what needs to be done to be sure that this is a job that lasts another 90 years. And um, so we're excited to be continuing this work um, now that the weather's getting nicer. There's been members from our group up there um, the last two Saturdays and have plans to keep going up there every Saturday that the weather allows to keep working on small, um, smaller projects that our volunteers can continue to keep working on. But uh, this being such a major project, uh, we're seeking support for the additional funding that's required to get this job done. Um, Duffy can start the job in August um, and he said he can get it completed by the end of September which is great for us because uh, astronomically, there's some big things coming up in October that we would ideally like to have this project uh, completed by that time so that the observatory is um, even more of a historical showpiece by the time we're wanting to have um, work there. Sounds good. Sounds like a good project. Do you guys have any comments on that, Dick or Gloria? Will this be, I do. Will this be the last uh, ask that they will make of us? Do they feel that the project will be done? Good question. Did you hear that, Leslie? Yeah, if this was going to be the last big ask for funds for this project. And I, as far as we can tell, yes, um, because this project should put, there's some, a little bit of work on the dome, um, but we have no idea what what that's gonna cost, but this is the last um, that we can see major project that would really put the facility back in a position where um, the school can reasonably be, you know, be responsible for its continued maintenance over time after this major restoration. Okay, sounds good. Um, I skipped over the part of reviewing financials, but there's, is there any issue with uh, doing this if we wanna do it? Got plenty of funds. Yeah, I'd like to do it. 
I don't have a dollar amount in front of me. It's right here. Nine thousand eight. Uh, yeah, nine thousand eight hundred and eighty dollars was uh, his quote total. Yeah. You see it right there. Yep. There you go. Did you want to make a motion? Yes. I I uh, move that we approve the expenditure of nine thousand eight hundred and eighty dollars from the Copley Trust Fund uh, in support of the Memorial Star County Stargazers for repairs on uh, the observatory. Okay, I have a motion by Eric. Do I have a second? A second. Second by Dick. Is there any further discussion on this? I'd like to add that uh, because of the observatory, this community is going to have uh, added an observatory in the high school astronomy course, which would um, be interesting to know if there's any other astronomy courses in the state of Vermont in a high school. Something right. high school this size. That's impressive. That's great, yeah. Is there any further discussion on this? All in favor say aye, Brian. Aye. Gary. Aye. Eric. Aye. Dick. Aye. Gloria. Motion is passed unanimously. Aye. Oh, sorry, Judy. Sorry. Just a few too many. <laughs> um, all right. Motion is passed. Thank you. Um, do you have any other questions for us, Leslie? Um, I don't think so. I see Neil's in here too. Neil, do we have any other questions? I think we're all set. Okay. Thanks for, for coming tonight. Good. Thank you. You know that, yeah. Thank you very oh, much. just explaining the, the timeline. Oh yeah, the three months. Yeah. It's a three month waiting period, you know, to get the funds and then we approve it. That's how that Copley, Copley fund goes. That sounds yeah, like it'll work out all right. Yeah, that's fine. That's why we wanted to get it to you this early in the spring, because um, the work can't begin until August anyway, so we should be all right there. Right. You are aware of that. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. All right. Thanks. Yep. So we'll go back to reviewing the financials. Do you want to talk about that, Dick? Well, the people are supposed to be here. Oh, are they? Yeah. Uh, Yes. Dave? Hello, this is Andrew Bowman speaking. Uh, Dave and I both had a little technical difficulties getting in, um, but okay. uh, Dave's not quite on yet, but uh, uh, my name is Andrew Bowman. I am available as well. Okay. It's a little quiet. Oh, I got it. Go ahead. So this is Dave. I'm, I am on, but the network that I'm using, um, I'm not able to share my camera. It's it's blocking access to the camera. So uh, okay. Well, as long as we can hear you. Okay, that's great. Yes. Yeah, so um, sorry with everybody. I can share my screen and give a brief presentation to share with everybody. If that would work for all of you. Yeah, you sound a little bit underwater. I don't know if you can uh, come a little closer to your mic. Okay. Sorry about that. Can you guys hear? Not very well. You can't hear us? Uh, that's a little better. Let me, oh, Still yeah. kind of like the underwater voice, you know? Let me check my, my, uh, my microphone level. Hold on. So Andrew, if, if they can't hear you, um, if you want to share your screen, I'll sort of walk everybody through it and we can go through the presentation. Sure. That would be better. Dave, we can hear you really well. Okay, good. Yeah, so Andrew, you're still breaking up, unfortunately. So okay. um, if you want to just, at the starting point, share okay. your screen. Here we go. That'd be super. Thanks, Dave. Yep. I think everybody's sort of learning on the fly this evening. I'm not sure. All right. Okay. 
people should be able to see that now. We can see it. Very good. Well, most of us can. Determine that. <laughs> Andrew, right now, what we see on your screen is the Zoom, um, just the general information audio setup screen instead of the presentation. Oh, I apologize. Let me share. That's okay. So we're both uh, looking forward to the day when we can meet everybody in person as we're, you know, as a company and individually we're all still um, going through the process of getting our own health care taken care of uh, so that we can meet with people in person. Yes. All right. How was that? There, Andrew. Look at that. Um, so we'll, we'll move right along as far as the information that we have. It's uh, nice to be here with you on page two. What we have is an overview of how the Copley uh, assets are currently invested from a broad-based perspective. I'm not sure if everybody can, can see the screen um, in detail, but going from left to right, we have the total value of the account at just, just over $2 million. The principal trust is $1.9 million, and the income trust is $81,000. And every, every year, essentially, distributions are being made from the income trust. And every year, dividends and income distribute from the principal trust in, into the income trust to replenish uh, the income trust. What you have today is, is an account in the income trust that has, uh, I, would, I would just describe it as a significant cash balance. I would expect that that cash balance would be spent most, in most scenarios within a year. Otherwise, any cash that's in, expected to be available to be invested for more than a year could be put into the financial markets. But that's where the whole board of trustees would have to agree on how much money uh, to be reinvested back into the financial markets. And in that income trust account, it really becomes a majority of those funds would be invested in bonds and fixed income securities. Um, and then going back to the principal trust, invested on a long-term basis, Essentially, as you see them now, you know, broad asset mix of uh, both bonds, stocks, and cash. There's always a cash component to the trust, and really the purpose is to generate uh, favorable long-term returns as well as income that gets distributed into the income trust. And so with, with that being said, I think I'll just pause there. I know that there are probably new audience members that might have questions. Questions? Uh, I, my question would be about the availability of the funds. We never know when we're going to get a request for a project. So if those funds are reinvested, how would we, uh, or what would our access be to the funds should we receive a request from the public? Now, once we receive a request, we have a 90 day waiting period until we come back after having evaluated it and do a, a final vote on whether to approve the money. We do have a, a period of time there, but how would we access the funds that we're getting ready to approve? Really, it's a very simple process where it's an email request uh, to Andrew. And within that email, from that time of the request, it essentially is a two to three day uh, business cycle process before we'd be able to get the funds into the account that you requested. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other questions? I have a comment. It looks like it's, we've had we've had a lot of growth 
since the last time I've seen this, and um, that's a really good thing. I guess uh, pretty par with uh, the rest of the market. We've had tremendous um, one-year returns and very favorable long-term returns on on an absolute basis. Andrew, if you wanted to move to the next slide, that'd be terrific. Um, so on page three, what you have reading <clears throat> left to right is the total combined returns of the account. You have them both gross of fees and net of fees. So on a 10-year basis, gross of fees, the return has been 6.25% 6, 6 and net of fees, it's 5.59%. To the right, we have the main account return and then the income account return. And this is all showing um, essentially what your returns have been over multiple time periods compared against an index, a composite index below, which represents essentially the asset mix of the combined account. And so on a on a five-year basis, as an example, an index which has no fees and no costs, no management whatsoever, but yet um, essentially if you could invest directly in an index without any fees, the return would be 9%. During that same five-year time period, our return has been 8.41%, which is a terrific absolute return. Um, what I would describe is that the past one, three, five years, especially, you've had just phenomenal returns in the stock market and low returns in the bond market on a relative basis. And today, if you look at the bond market, the current yield on the 10-year Treasury security is about 1.6%, which is much lower than his, the historical norm of 4 to 5%. And so what we're trying to build in for expectations is that the total account return that all clients will receive, no matter where you're invested, no matter what type of risk portfolio that you have, returns will be lower because bond yields are so low today across every maturity within the bond market. And so overall, our expectations is that returns for the, for the portfolio will be in the five to six and a half percent range as you look ahead for the next five to 10 years. Um, but as you mentioned, the growth is, has been very favorable. Andrew, I'm not sure if you want to turn to the next page. Um, <clears throat> Andrew's put together this, this summary that shows spending um, and distributions over the past few years. And it, he's also summarized at the very bottom of the table how the account has grown in value even with the distributions. So this gives you a, a solid snapshot of both the growth of the portfolio as well as how funds have been distributed. Great. Any questions? No questions? I know it's hard to see the screen. It's almost like we all need to have little iPads or something. Does that, that help? Does that help? Yeah. So what, what we can do is we can share the, the entire presentation with you as a follow-up uh, tomorrow. We'll share it as a PDF document that everybody can review. That, that sounds great. I think, you know, it's really hard for us to see the presentation from uh, 10 feet away on the screen, but it'd be great if we could get it to us in a PDF. And we could uh, Understood. review it. Understood. We'll definitely get that to you. Um, yeah. Andrew, if you could turn to the next slide. 
And even though you can't see it, what we're asking for here is, is essentially a new updated corporate resolution that gives us the authorized parties on the account who can give us instructions to um, request withdrawal from the account and give us uh, general direction. Yeah, another item that we'd like to try and take care of is really update investment policy statements. It's been some time since we've had a, an agreement sign. And so essentially, we're going to have the same strategy in place with a new document. So we'll have two new documents to share with the authorized parties so that we're all in agreement how both the income account is going to be managed as well as how the principal account will be managed. That sounds good. Okay. So what Andrew's included in the, in the final pages would be very difficult to cover um, given the distance you are away from the script. And so what it is, it just gives you a snapshot of each portfolio and what's held inside of the account. And so uh, it will be a much clearer presentation when you have it in front of you um, right. in the in electronic copy. I think that's the best way for us to view it individually. OK. okay. So at this point, I would, I would say that um, both Andrew and I are available for questions. Andrew's really the point of contact when it comes to requesting a withdrawal of funds and anything related to the administration of accounts. If we need to update individuals that need access, viewing access of the account, electronic access, electronic statements, um, Andrew's really the go-to person. And both he and I will, will continue to service the account and take care of um, the copy relationship. And really, we look forward to the day when we can actually meet in person. We'll, we'll make sure to have um, physical copies as well as an electronic copy that everybody, everybody can view. That's great. And meanwhile, we'll, if you send us a PDF document, we'll review it. And if we have any questions, we'll reach out to you. OK. Does anybody have any questions now? Judy? Brian, can you see all this, Brian? Yes. you have any questions? No, I'm all set. I'm just, uh, I'm very impressed with the performance. You know, it's a um, great time to have uh, substantial investment. It's growing. It's, it's been um, incredible results, given everything that we've been going through over the past year plus. And a lot of it's due in part to the stimulus and expectation that we're going to have a very strong rebound um, and, you know, get our, get our feet on the ground again and be able to open up the economy and, and really continue to prosper the way we have in the past as well. Sounds good. Any, qu any questions, Gary? No? I'm good. Thanks a lot for uh, joining us. And uh, even though it's difficult, we'll uh, look forward to looking at the PDF. Okay. Terrific. Well, thank you for having us all. Have a good night. Do we have any other questions for Copy Trust? A no. motion to adjourn the Copy Trust meeting. I hear a motion. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Dick. All in favor say aye, Brian. Aye. The rest of the group? Aye. aye. Any opposed? We are now out of Copley Trust. Thank you for coming. Well, we're now in the regular select board meeting. So next on the agenda is to approve the minutes. Approving the minutes of April 19th, 2021. I make a motion to approve the minutes with a change uh, adding a sentence uh, to the discussion of ATVs on Silver Ridge Road, the sentence reads, uh, in quotes, the select board agreed that the trial period beginning in 2019 has expired, end quote. Okay, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Judy. Is there any further discussion on it? 
All in favor say I'll, aye. Oh, Brian, go ahead. So I, I don't agree with that. I thought we decided to wait on that. Wait on um, being expired? Yes. Well, we can talk about it. We, Brian, is there, um, the, way, the way I viewed it is we had uh, the 2019, that, that motion was passed by Chris Town or was presented by Chris Town, specifically the verbiage that a trial period for the year 2019 to open that road. That year ended. The next spring, the club came back to see us in 2020 and requested to continue using the road, but extending the hours from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. In fact, the time we approved that, so that was for the 2020 season. Uh, and then we, uh, tonight we were going to receive a, a new proposal that we have not received. We're not gonna receive that tonight. But anyway, relative to the 2019 uh, motion that Chris Town made and passed, that, that year has ended. In my opinion, then that that year's trial period has ended. So let me let me just make sure because one thing I see we're going to have to do is make sure that when we speak, we speak and the whole thing comes out. Because if if I agree with that, that, that ended, does that mean they the trail um, cannot be used? Well, Silver Ridge Road can't be used, right? right. Until we, until another proposal is brought before us, or until we make another motion. So, so 2020, we we used it with no, no permit. What yeah, you're saying? They came, they came back to us in the spring of 2020 with a request to use it and extend the hours of usage to 8 p.m. Remember right. that? Yes. So that that was the new proposal for 2020. And we approved it. We didn't call it a trial period. We simply, having had no feedback from 2019, we approved the use of the road for 2020 with extended hours. Okay. So, right. so, so 2020, so, sorry. 2020's proposal, you know, their proposal happened. The season ended in October. So this year, they're going to present us with a, a new proposal. We haven't received that officially yet. And when we do, that's when the discussion will occur. But until that time, it's my understanding, no Silver Ridge Road is closed. Until we get another proposal. Because, uh, see, was... I'm thinking of, you're saying that it was um, 2019 when they came back to us. I thought it was automatically renewed, renewed with a uh, extra two hours. And I would think that would be good until we come up with another one. So I would think it'd be good till not that the trails open till the May 15th anyways, but my opinion is, and I guess we got to make sure we say it when we do it, is that was good until that happens. I don't see shutting it down. And then two months from now we vote on it. And the town says, if the town says no at that time, I think that's the time to shut it down, but that's my opinion. And uh, that's the way I'm going to vote. Okay, yeah, you can, you can. Yep. Have that I, you know, my opinion is like Eric. I, I feel like because Chris put an end date in there, he put for 2019. That meant 2019, and um, so that's year by year. And that's my opinion. And then, like Eric said, in 2020 they came back and asked for extended hours, and and we approved that. So that was 2020, but now that means it's expired for the end of 2020 because it's 2021 now. So we would have to either renew it or if we take no action, it's expired. That's how I read it and understand it. I don't know if you, how you guys feel. Well, I'm, I'm not gonna vote on it right. either way, but um, I don't know. I uh, It's pretty confusing. I wasn't here, yeah, of course, when the original motion was made. And I agree with Brian, it is confusing, but uh, it is. I don't know, it appears that the question is did the trial period end in 2019, which it obviously did. Right. But then in 2020, 
We amended it. I'm going to tell you again, and you revisited it and uh, approved it. And I don't know if you approved it as a trial, right? as an additional trial period, or if you just approved the use of the road. See, Bob, one thing I want to say, I don't think that when we did that, that we expected to do this every year. We did. I figured once, once it was approved and it was seemed to be working fairly smooth, I'm not saying there was people, there were some that had issues. Um, I don't know as we got enough uh, information to shut it down at that time. So my thoughts are, I thought, not that I want to make a decision, decision whether or not it runs or it doesn't. I want the town to do it when we vote. So I don't know why it would hurt anything to, if you want to shut it down saying it was a the time and then maybe make another motion to open it back up until the town votes. Maybe that's a way to go. I'm just saying that I don't, I don't, I had no intentions and I didn't think that it was right that that was going to be done every year. Once it went through, I thought it was going to be all right and it's going to be used unless something drastic happened and said, hey, we need to shut it down, which I don't think it did happen. So my opinion. Right. No, I, I understand that, Brian. I, I thought the same thing. I think we all did that, um, you know, we all missed the fact that Chris said 2019. Yep. If he hadn't said 2019, it would be open right now, you know, or it'd right. be open in but because he said that, that was sort of a year to year thing. And none of us caught it. I didn't catch it. You know, no one caught it. So then, then it's, um, you know, becomes a year to year thing. And according so, to the minutes for our last meeting, um, it pretty much said that we had made up our mind to wait. But now I guess we're changing that. Well, no, maybe I guess you didn't understand because I thought we had. We had all decided that it expired. It's so hard when you're when um, you know we're trying to do it this way. What do you think, Judy? How does I think also we we've, we've felt, there's been a lot of pressure on us yeah. to make a decision, and we had the the trial period was 2019, and like you said, we we forgot about it was a trial period, and they came back in 2020. We extended the hours, and we hadn't really heard any um, dis, disgruntled residents at that time. Right. And it seemed to me that there was just uh, one or two people out there who decided that it wasn't working on Silver Ridge Road and then it just blew up in the town. Right. Because the, the rumor out there, I just talked to someone recently, is that we were approving ATVs across the board. Oh, I know. And it, and it was like, no, we didn't do that. So it, it, um, we really have to revisit this. Um, I'd like to kind of put a lid on it for right now maybe lid is the wrong word but just so we can have a chance to breathe and really look at what is um what are are there options out there that'll be agreeable to most of the people in the community so that the atv people can have a recreational um ability to use the recreational facilities and the and the people in the town aren't going to be disturbed by that i don't know if there's a possible solution to that but i'd like to explore that right so get it, given what you asked, I think we have to, at this point, um, say no to Silver Ridge Road being open, to go with what we talked about two weeks ago. Right. I mean, that was my intent with going door to door is to try to get some feedback, you know, because it's been hard to get feedback. We did get some emails, particularly from, you know, one, one household, and um, that's why I went out door to door. And, you know, I there's some comments on, on – uh, social media that people were under duress when I knocked on their door, but I knew half of them and they were like, hell, I don't mind at all. You know, I think it's a great thing. And, um, you know, also reports, oh, there's only eight houses, but three of the houses are owned by the same person. And I talked to that person and they're all good with it. So, you know, I'm just trying to do due diligence according to what, how we said, we stated it was 2019. So I felt like it expired after 2019. Then Eric brought up how we, we amended it in 2020 which added more hours, which we didn't really say in the motion, okay, this is, we're extending the trial period and including the extra hours. <clears throat> you know, we never said that, but be that as may, 2020 is over. 
you know, and 2019 is over, so we're in 2021. And because of the pressure, I mean, I get a dozen emails every day. And it's not for people on Silver Ridge Road. In fact, there's only one person on Silver Ridge Road that, that even contacts us, um, other than to say, go for it. Um, but I get them, most of my emails are from Mud City Loop because people seem to think that we're gonna open Mud City Loop to everybody on ATVs. And, you know, people are tuned in tonight because they think that. And we've never, I've never even talked about Mud City Loop, you know, so. But I do know that the group has decided to withdraw their their proposal and they're going to revise it and they're going to come back to us. And once we have a proposal in front of us, then we can do something about 2021. But I think, you know, uh, it, it may also coincide with the community discussion and then it'll be a moot point if we have a vote for, for everywhere. It, it may not. It may involve Silver Ridge Road. It may not. But until we get something on Silver Ridge Road, that's, that's how I understand it, Brian. I'm trying to be fair to everybody, you know. And Eric also shared with us and um, Mr. Benson about how well the ATV people helped him um, survive COVID. Yeah. So that was a big plus. And your your visitation to all the people on the street, I really appreciate that too. Yeah. Brian, uh, I'll just add, I think the difference this year is simply the, the public input we received about all roads. I don't, I did not, and I said it at last meeting, I did not have a problem that we continued Silver Ridge Road. However, at last meeting, we did not have a proposal for this year. And the difference between this year and last year, and last year we had no feedback, positive or negative. We had no negative feedback. This year, we've had negative feedback on Silver Ridge Road and about any other proposal that might come in front of us. So that's why I said we needed to have a proposal from the club in front of us otherwise we were the ones steering the ship on this and i didn't think that was the right position for the board to be in we typically react to proposals that are presented to us and at that point, last meeting we did not have a proposal from the club we were talking about the trial period the cootiers had asked us to put that on the agenda we did we discussed it and uh, so that's why i think at this point it's a year-to-year -year piece because we received so much feedback and I think that we should move forward with a proposal in front of us from the club. And then we have, everybody's talking about the same group of roads. We're, we're not working off rumor and hearsay. We have a specified request from the club and then we all know which roads they're actually asking to use. And you certainly can vote no to these minutes if you don't wanna, if you don't wanna, we, I respect that. Okay. Bob, this is Lisa Desjardins. Can I can I ask a question? You can. We're doing it. We're in a discussion period on the, you know, voting yes or no for the minutes. So go ahead. Okay. No, it's about this whole ATV thing. I thought that um, as a resident, when someone brings something to your attention with a concern or or whatever, that that is that starts the topic and the and the go around with this. Is that not so? That's very, very true. We try to address every concern that comes before us. Okay, so when we start talking about this, that initiates the, the process or you have, do you have to have a proposal in front of you to do that? What if there wasn't a group and there were just some residents that wanted to have that happen? We would have to have a, a proposal, some sort of official proposal or question to come before us. That's how things typically work. Okay, yeah. right, fair enough. I didn't know. I was just wanted to be clear. The other thing I wanted to know is um, the Vasta Trail for snow machines. Is this a yearly thing also? No. Uh, How right. come? Go ahead, Gary. The, the Vasta Trails are uh, on uh, private land. They have uh, landowner permission from the private. From private, private land. We think this is making reference to when we have to travel snow machines on our public highways. Right, they exactly. Ask, come to us. To I mean, they're, they're no different than what we're asking for. Usually, there's there has been a couple individuals um, that have come to the select board and asked for permission to travel on a specific road. They do come to you with a specific proposal to do that. Right. Um, okay. There are, 
just town roads that are open to VAT to VAS in the winter are unmaintained class four roads. That's done by statute. Okay, so how are these folks allowed to travel down Brooklyn Street or to Ridge Street or to Hoagies or across the street to McDonald's or across the street from um, from Duncan to Maple Fields? That's all state and town highways. How is that allowed without having to be discussed on a yearly basis? I just I don't understand that. You're talking about snow machines, Lisa? Yes, I am, Eric. Okay, so the snow machines, the last request I remember getting was from a folks that lived on Summer Street in the Summer Street, Union Street area. They had requested permission to travel Summer Street, cross over to Pleasant Street and down to the rail trail to access it. We granted them permission to do that. And we said at any time we received a complaint, we would give them a notification and we could hold our permission for that. If okay. there's anybody driving on any of the, a snow machine on any of the roads that you mentioned, Main Street. Mm -hmm. They uh, are, that's the thing. Hoagies or anything like that. That's a violation of Vermont law. Mm -hmm. uh, we have not given permission for folks to ride their snow machines to those areas, mm -hmm. and that that's a law enforcement issue uh, for you know to enforce that. It's, we certainly did not give permission for anybody to travel inside the village on a snow machine, other than one specifically that came to us with their request. We have two Morristown police officers right here in the room, and they're nodding, shaking their heads yes. And does it happen? Yes, but is it illegal? Yes. Um, the other one you talked about was Maplefield. Yeah. I do know that from like Dunkin' Donuts right there across the road to Maplefield, they do have permission from FAST to do that. So, yes, I just, I don't. Not, not to go to Hoagie's and not to go to Snap Fitness. I saw a snowmobile Snap Fitness this yeah. last winter also. Exactly. But so, it's not legal. I guess what I'm trying to say is I just, I don't think it's fair. I don't know why it's such a big deal for ATVs and it wasn't for snow machines kind of feeling like it's we're being targeted you know right. um right. starting to feel maybe even being a little bit discrimination here i don't i just don't think this is fair and it's just because someone doesn't like what we're doing or doesn't like you know what the machines do or offer or whatever it doesn't mean that they have the right to take away what we want to do and and such so right. i Thank That's you for your comment. Thank you. Thank you. So back to uh, approving the minutes. Is there any further discussion on this? Brian, any further comment? No, sorry to get it, to get it all stirred up. It's just that it's not the way I thought it went. And no, I don't think that's the way it should have gone. Right, you're, you're entitled to your opinion, right? I respect oh that. yeah, I know, thanks. It's been so, so long since, uh, could Eric read that again? Yeah. <laughs> Yep, one time. My motion was uh, to accept the minutes with a, the change uh, in addition to the sentence under the ATVs on Silver Ridge Road. The sentence is, quote, the select board agreed that the trial period beginning in 2019 has expired, end quote. And you seconded it, right? I think I did, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, so could, you, could you repeat that, please? Can you could you uh, identify yourself, sir? I'm sorry. When you speak, would you please introduce yourself? Oh yes, of course, and I'm big for that. And here I am not doing it. Uh, Ed Lowenton, I vote in Morristown. Okay, thank you. I knew who you were, but I wanted to. So no, everybody no, no, knows. You're, you're absolutely right. Everyone who speaks, including especially those who are just represented on the uh, uh, screen by phone numbers. Please tell, tell us who you are and where you live and, and what town you vote in. So, yes, I just asked for a repeat. I think you said you're amending the minutes to include the decision uh, uh, to suspend ATV travel on Silver Ridge Road. Did I hear that correctly? No, no, no that's not the word that we use. The, the quote sorry? is as follows, Mr. Wellington. The quote is as follows. The select board agreed that the trial period beginning in 2019 has expired. That's, that's the quote. The word hey, Bob. Is Go ahead, Brian. So by doing what, what I think is happening right now is according to the minutes, we didn't decide that. It says there that we were postponing it until we got a proposal. So right. what should happen, I think, in my mind is we should make a 
proposal tonight to end it, not put it in the minutes of the last meeting because it didn't happen last meeting. That's what I'm thinking, but. Well, somehow it made the headlines on the News and Citizen. <laughs> I guess that reporter had it all wrong. Well, that's the problem if you uh, pay attention to media. Sometimes they're not accurate. That and, is certainly, um, true. certainly true. Yeah, I get quoted all the time inaccurately by, by sure. private citizens and by newspapers and everybody <laughs> else. Uh, but minutes, this is something about minutes. Minutes do not have to have everything that is, that is said in a meeting. In mm -hmm. fact, minutes only need to say actions that were taken. That's all they need to have. That's the most important part about minutes. Mm -hmm. And we were just putting it out there. We've had a lot of people contact me, contact Dan, about amending the minutes tonight to make sure that it said that the trial period has ended. Well, we took no action at the last meeting. We didn't have to. Because if, if it did in fact end at the end of 2019, there was no need for, for an action. So as, as a, a courtesy, we were just going to put in the minutes that we agreed. We didn't make a motion. We didn't do any of that. We just agreed that that trial period has ended. Because a lot of people are really, they want to know. <laughs> so... It's up to the board. Do you guys want to want to agree to that? I remember you specifically saying that statement. Yeah. Because I didn't want to vote for it. Right. But I felt. Who I are you? Identify I'm yourself. Judy, I'm Judy Bickford. I'm one of the select board people. Oh. You can't see me. I can't. I'm invisible. Yeah. All right. Is there any further discussion? Brian, any more comments? No, thank you. Okay, so all in favor to approve these minutes, Brian? No. Gary? I abstain. Judy? Yes. Eric? Yes. And I'm yes, motion is passed, four to one. Thanks, Brian. Have we ever had a discussion like that on approval of minutes? Uh, I'm not sure. Hey, Bob? Yes, sir. You just said four to one. It's three to one, one abstention. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Thank you for pointing that out. Three to one and one abstain. Thanks Thank for clarifying you. that, Brian. Thanks. So, so what is so does this mean that currently Silver Ridge Road is closed to ATV? Yes, currently, well, for the next two weeks anyway, it's closed. Right. Until we get another proposal in front of us that we we will uh, take action on. It's which closed. we plan on getting that to you soon anyway but um so it's closed and how do we reinforce how do we get the message to the members that's another good question that, that's also something i want to bring up tonight because i have had a lot of complaints um i'm not sure if the pd has had them but uh four wheelers you know going down silver ridge road even though even though it's not open yet and but it's the same as any road just you know, ATVs go down, they go down my road every single day too. But um, I know that's a big thing. People are saying that they're constantly going down to Ridge Road. And, um, and also as well as maybe having some signage out there. The other thing that was brought to our attention is there's a sign for a trailhead in the parking lot at uh, Sunset Motor Inn. And that one is private property. So that's not something we would do. Uh, it's not, has nothing to do with the town. So it's not a sign that we would have removed or whatever. That's been asked of us by a few different people. So um, just to clarify that, but the, the PD is out there patrolling all the time. They're, they're always looking for that kind of thing. And, mm -hmm. you know, if there's people out there on that road, they're, they're going to get stopped. And they, maybe they get a warning, but maybe they get a ticket. I don't know. Right. But uh, so that's, that's how we see it. Okay. Also, Lisa, this is Gary. I think that VASA will provide signs saying that this road is uh, officially closed to ATVs. Okay, so we can just, get, well, see if we can get some from them. Um, also, I have one other question. If we were to get permission from landowners on Silver Ridge Road, right, to get to Hyde Park, is 
the road Skyview Acres is that a town road or is that a private road? Uh, town road. So we That's would have to, if we got permission from landowners to get through there, would we need permit? We would need permission from the select board, correct, to get across that road. I would think so. Yes, across Skyview, but not on the other side. If they got permission on the. Yeah, if they want to cross town roads that we have, they would still need permission to cross right. town roads. If you want to cross town roads, yeah. Okay. All right. Just Thank second. you. Yeah. All right. Next, next is community concerns. Do we have any community concerns tonight that are not ATVs? Okay. Hearing none. Do we have any liquor control tonight? I don't think so. All right, we'll do the new no, business no. then. Sarah? I was no, just going to say all the liquor license renewals are done for the year. Okay, great. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks for tuning in anyway. Okay, let's do the, um, the one that you started with uh, the right away. The, the changes. So we have two um, requests to work in the right of way. I think either one of our gaps all over there, Kevin. So um, one is on Washington Highway, and I think it's just access to the water line. Water line for now. And so and they work with Kevin, and Kevin's looked at it and doesn't have a problem with it. But it's not too much for them, so that would be pretty cool. They're just tapping into a water line. Okay. Which one is that? That's a hollow moil view, is it? Oh, okay. It's this one here. Yeah. 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 Okay. No, no one's doing the work there. All right. It's just beyond the army, opposite side of the road. Do you? On Washington Highway. Oh, okay. yes. Yeah. I make a motion that we approve the uh, right of way uh, permit for more maintenance on Washington Highway. Okay. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Gary. Is there any further discussion on this? All in favor say aye, Brian. Aye. Gary. Aye. Judy. Aye. Eric. Aye. Motion is passed unanimously. Next, next right away. Um, this is an application from uh, Eustace Cable to put um, cable TV, cable and roads. Um, that's on the green road. I'm gonna let Kevin talk a little bit more about this because I know he has a few concerns. Oh yeah. Um, Right now, we don't charge anybody for these permits. Um, and there's no deterrent if they don't get them, other than they have to stop work um, and submit. And I wouldn't have known this was going on if I hadn't been called by a concerned citizen saying, hey, you know they're up there putting cable down in the middle of your road. It wasn't in the middle of the road, it was off on the side of the road, but. You didn't know about it. <laughs> I didn't know, I still didn't know about it. Okay. So I went up and talked to the person, and they're very powerful. Obviously, the permit got submitted. Um, so my further discussion at some other point would be for us to go back to the proposal of policy change, so we can actually maybe have a little teeth on this when people don't apply for them. Uh, I have found that, or heard that this this particular cable. This dollar has uh, done this quite frequently. Yeah, this is this is the second time, at least the second time I know that they put in cable in the towns right away, or a conduit within the towns right away, but without no communication, no communications. And, and unfortunately, with this, as a subcontractor, yes, this is a subcontractor. Subcontractor, yeah. You know, so he's just and he's doing I, it. I frankly, you know, I had a call from them a week before, saying, "Yes, you need a permit to do this." Send it to us. I think I, I'm pretty sure I gave Kevin's phone number. Call him; he'll work with you. So um, I, I agree with, with Kevin on this one. This isn't the first time at all, um, and I know there have been other cases out there where they've been caught and said, "What are you doing?" Um, you know, Is this just Eustace Cable? Yes. Well, Eustace, usually it's, it's a subcontractor because these are all subcontracting for Comcast. So it's usually somebody that's doing that type of work for Comcast. What do you recommend we do then? Um, you know, uh, I guess we could figure out a way to draft them a letter and go, hey, next time, you know, we might not approve your permit. 
because we keep having a pro you know, problems with you not getting your permit. Right. Oh, well, and you will not dig in our road you unless you have our, in, in, in our roads. I mean, you know, I think that's the, the pushback. I don't know that there's any fines out there. I have to research statute first to see. Yeah. I mean, you own the roads. Um, you know, you could certainly make them take everything out that, you know, they already put in and make it do it again. You know, that, that's a cost of doing business. We've been nice and saying just, hey, stop. Kevin could easily just go out and say, take it out. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so it'd be good to research the statute and find out. I can find out. You know, I don't know that there's any teeth to that statute per se without taking a look at it. I know that the select board has every authority to approve work in the right way, but I don't know what the teeth are for somebody not getting that permission. So I'd have to do more research on that. So it's okay. We'll approve this one now. I I would think that going forward that you would require some sort of monetary. Uh, application fee. Application fee, because you you also may end up with remediation. I mean, right. some of these so I mean, they, just, right? they just go through and no compaction or anything, and they only put it down this far, and then I mean, you may end up with sinkhole up with a greater. I've seen that happen too. I mean, they just bury it enough to get. But and we've had that happen, especially when they put it right on the shoulder. And all yeah. of a sudden, somebody's out there grading, and all of a sudden, there's a cable coming up. Yeah, or you're trying to clean your ditches or something. It's blown by Mr. Cross. There's one of the ditch right there. Yeah. Hmm. So I think they ought to revisit the public permit application. Yeah. When the time comes. 99% of the people we deal with out there, you know, either they honestly don't know, and once we tell them, they always come forward. Oh, didn't know. And we're actually just like one of the highway, you know, there's just one that just you know, slipped us. Uh, but most of the time we have the companies all know um, when we don't problem. This particular company knows because we work with them a lot. Well, we have a protocol too for finish fix on the road afterward. Uh, well, that's really for paved roads. Right. These are dirt roads. So well, maybe we should have it for dirt road as well, like, like yeah, Gary said, yeah, compaction yeah. and all that. Well, isn't there a difference here? We're, we're talking right of way versus actual traveled roadway. Right. I mean, well, this, this permit application on Washington Highway is about working in the right of way, which is off the edge of the road. My my definition, it sounds like useless cable digging into our road. Is that the case? Well, they're between the drive lane and the ditch. So you, on the shoulder. Can be made both ways. They're in the shoulder of the road. Most people don't drive on the shoulder of the road, but there could be an argument that it's still within our road. We've, we've always used two different permits. If somebody's coming in doing a pavement cut, we, we've always used the pavement cut for somebody that's going out. We, we've got, you know, we're going to, we've got, you're going to have to reimburse for the cost. Generally speaking, on the gravel roads, because they are a little bit easier to maintain, they're a little bit easier to work on, they're not something. We have the right person doing it. We generally don't have a problem. This, this company has given us problems by not going through the process. I'm talking to us, and this one, you know, Kevin found out. Well, yeah, they were going right across the top of the culvert, but we don't want it across the top of our culvert. Sure. Yeah. You know, um, so that's the problem with with this particular company that we have. So you got, you want to do the research and follow I'll up? Do the them? research and follow up. So I, I, let me find out what kind of teeth that we have. Why would you want to bury your cable in the roadway? Why wouldn't they want to be on the other side of the ditch, still in our right of way, but out of the traveled lane? The word to do knockhead it. comes to mind. Do it I mean, with no the contractor in the right mind digs in a roadway right. to bury a cable only a foot down. So if Houston's cable is going to play ignorant on this, then shut them down next time. Stop the stop the project, Kevin. Oh, well, we did. We did. Okay. We shut them right down. We shut them down because that's just plain ignorant. Yeah. No, we we but we playing we that's playing done. against the town and, and hoping they don't get caught. I don't buy that. No, we, we did shut it down. We stopped and said, you're not doing any more for the permit. Yeah. Well, there's a, we have a neighbor who, when I walk by the house, the cable's just sitting there on the on the, on the the ground. It's all like wrapped up. I, I thought they were going to come back and bury it, but I think it's still just sitting there. Is that something that, that's a concern? It's on Randolph Road. It's on the, it's on the side of the road. I don't know. <laughs> Is that the base of the pole? Yeah, yeah. Just sitting, I'm like, it's spoiled up. Hmm. Come back and put something in there, it'll, I don't know. I mean, it's been about a year. It's been sitting there, so. Carl, they left excess and just 
walk away from it. But if you right. need some, if you need some, just cut it off. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> use what you want. They'll come pick this. <laughs> I guess I wanted to when we when we issue a permit like this. So we we've, we've granted the permit for the Washington Highway Day. What do we do with that information? Do we document it somehow? Is it kept so that we know that we remember ten years from now somebody the, the new highway superintendent knows there's a cable there's a water line there is on Washington Highway. How do we how do we track that? It's still in the file cabinet. Okay. We, I don't know. I mean, I, we don't have the computerized system to enter everything in, so okay. everything is now still so it's a paper case. Okay. And another reason why we <clears throat> dictate everything before we did anything. Uh, absolutely. So everybody's supposed to. Yeah, oh yes. All right. All right. So do we have a motion on this? Was there, there wasn't a motion made yet. Do we need to have a motion? Yeah. Oh um, I thought oh I thought it was oh Oh, about the useless cable. Yeah, useless cable. Oh, okay. So I say, make a motion that yes. we allow useless cable to um, lay cable on the Doom Road on the um, approximately 1,700 feet from the intersection of Stagecoach. Is that what I need to say? I think so. Okay. I would say well, as long as the the highway superintendent has approved the actual location of the cable. That's it. That was in there. Yeah. Okay. Do I have a second? Sorry. Second by Eric. Is there any further discussion on this? All in favor say aye. Brian? Okay. Gary? Aye. Judy? Aye. Eric? Aye. Aye, aye as well. Motion is passed unanimously. Next one. Uh, the next is Joy Marshall Cemetery. Yes, um, I'd ask the select board to appoint Joy Marshall as an agent, excuse me, to um, convey real estate for the Pleasant View Cemetery. Okay. So I have a motion Sorry. by Eric and a second by Gary. Is there any further discussion on this? This is about what? Cemetery lots. Okay. Is it someone working on the cemetery lots or working with the committee? Joy does. Joy. Joy. Joy's on the the, the, the board. Board. Okay. And right now they need somebody to be able to sell lots. Um, right. Is, is this the, the official Sexton's position type of thing? No, it's not official Sexton's position. Don't com don't confuse the two. Right. Right now they they don't really have anybody that's available to sell lots. Right. You gotta remember, I think after town meeting, Sarah, if you're there, please correct me if I'm wrong. I think you appointed. Um, we appointed Dennis Smith as the agent to convey real estate for the Morristown Cemetery Association, and we appointed um, Mark Faith as the agent to convey real estate for the Pleasant View Cemetery. Right now, we don't have anybody to convey um, lots for the Pleasant View, um, and there are people that are interested in buying some. So we, this came, I guess, uh, kind of to realization last week. And now Joey's asking the board to appoint her as a, an, an agent to convey real estate for that, specifically for that cemetery. That, that that's sense? correct. The board just appointed um, Dennis to the Morristown Cemetery Association, but not one of the Pleasant View Association um, committee members were appointed at the time. And Joy reached out um, this week and thought that it would be the best idea. Okay, great. All in favor say aye. Brian? Aye. Gary? Aye. Judy? Aye. Eric? Aye. I'm aye as well. Motion is passed unanimously. Now we have the electrical right away. Yes. Um, this is actually um, the reason why the, the town has to sign off on this uh, electrical right away is with the oil housing project. When they did their last project up there, we, they got a community development block grant for the town. The reality of it is, is it's not a, it's a grant to the town and the grant, the town actually lends the housing project, the money, but it's deferred for 30 years. So we have a mortgage against this property in the amount of uh, something like $100,000, I think, because that's what the elevator costs were or something like that. So the, the, the loan is deferred forever, generally speaking, but we still have the, the mortgage. When somebody is granting a right-of-way for electrical utility, Anybody that has a lien against the property also has to approve that right away. 
So that's the reason why they, they've come to the town to ask for us to approve it. It's just across somebody's building a house, I guess, out back behind them, and they need to take the overhead electrical line across the corner of that property. They said it's certainly no property problem with that. Um, since the agents to convey real estate now are appointed, you can appoint me to sign this if the board so approves, but you should approve, knowing that, the partial release of the mortgage that's, that's been presented to you. That all makes sense? Gary, you look like you have questions. <laughs> no, just listen. Trying to absorb it all. Yeah, me too. I understand. I understand. <laughs> you know, it's a community development block grant thing that I think throws most people off because it's a grant to the town. But to a non-profit housing agency, which property, property is this for? It's the um, the house of the uh, senior senior the the uh, the Moyle the Moyle view. View. The Moyle view. There you Moyle go. view on Park Street. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So they the last improvements they did up there, I think, was specifically for the the elevator. Right. They got a community developed a block grant through the town from the state, which the town then loaned them the money, which was then deferred for thirty years. Does that all make sense? Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, you remember that. Oh, I'm, I'm taking metal notes, but you're going to have to write that one down. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There's, it's the same thing that happened with the Arthur's project. Do you remember that, Brian? Yeah. I knew you would. All right, do we have a motion on this? So are we looking to assign? You're doing, looking to do two things. You're looking to approve. Partial release of lien and, and authorize authority. someone to sign it. And, and ask and authorize me if, if, if you are comfortable with that to me to sign it for you. Is it two different motions? Um, it probably should be. Okay. Make a motion to approve the partial release of the mortgage for the Millennium Housing Limited Partnership in the town of Morristown, dated July 17, 2013. All right. I have a motion by Eric. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Judy. Any further discussion on this? All in favor say aye. Brian? Aye. Gary? Aye. Judy? Aye. Eric? Aye. Motion is passed unanimously. I uh, move that we authorize Dan Lindley to act as our agent to convey real estate for this partial release of the mortgage. Okay, I have a motion by Eric. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Judy. Any further di discussion? All in favor say aye. Brian? Aye. Gary? Aye. Judy? Aye. Eric? Aye. <clears throat> Motion is passed unanimously. <clears throat> All right. Next, we're now in, still in new business. We have the number one on the agenda now. Uh, the presentation. Are you with us out there? LAH2S-RCC. Area Health and Human Service Organizations Collaborative Overview. Go ahead, welcome. Thank you. So thank you all for just letting us join you and share what Laws Rock is all about. So if you are not from Health and Human Services, you have to know we love our acronyms. So it is a mouthful. So Laws Rock, here it is. So just about you, and I'm Corey, I'm one of the unified commanders for this. Um, I just want to kind of how it all started. So about a year ago, when we were just at the beginning of understanding what we were getting into with COVID, um, I think everyone was going through that. How do I help? How do I respond? Even organizations. So Copley and the Restorative Center said, hey, let's get a bunch of partners together um, and see if we can work this, work it out. So when we started meeting, we had 30 to 40 organizations and people coming together a few times a week talking about what clients need, who has it, how do I get it, how do we do it safely? We quickly realized we needed to do this in a really coordinated way um, if we were going to be effective. So a few weeks prior to that, Washington County had started an incident command system based after FEMA's model. And if you know anything about incident command structures, they're usually for natural disasters, earthquakes, fires, floods that have a really defined beginning and an end, not really viral pandemics. So this was really brand new. So we worked with Washington County and our counterparts there, and we, our team got some training and thought this is something worth trying. You know, we haven't had anything like this and now is as good a time as any to give it a try. What we were able to do was really tailor this 
a community model for our community to make it work. And thank you, shared our org chart. And this can look really daunting, really just in this, our core group, we have over 20 organizations and 20 people um, really doing a bulk of the work, not including all of our liaisons, which really double that number. And it, what really here, the, I want to show you this, this nucleus, it's this housing, food, medical, mental health, substance misuse, and employment. Everyone else in that structure is supporting that group. So when issues were starting to come up, all of our urgent and really most pressing issues really fell into those categories. And they really represent our most vulnerable community members. And so we have these other functions and other roles that are supporting this work. We have finance and administration and planning and logistics and public information. And what is really unique about this is we were working across organizations, really supporting not one organization, but an entire team for the community. Um, and it was really something special. You know, we started meeting regularly a few times a week, setting goals, identifying the most urgent issues, having a timeline. And every week we were really moving forward, making progress, really having a lot of success with this. We, we had a lot of lessons learned as well, but overall we've really been impressed. And so that was really doing immediate needs and now we're looking towards the future and how we have a structure like this um, for kind of big picture items. So I'm gonna let Emily take it away and share some of the work we've been doing. Thanks, Corey. And one of the things that we have been doing is um, we're now meeting every other week. And in this incident command structure, the commanders are getting information from all of the different participants who are in all of these different sectors on very specific objectives. What are the really specific things we're gonna to try to hit this week? Um, and then we're all pulling in that direction. We're all doing our part to pull in that direction. Um, so I think you guys have been um, getting from me my um, newsletter updates, which um, here, let me pull over here. Um, so you probably got one today. And you'll notice um, the sharing priority every week you get something that, you know, we're asking you to really push out through your networks into the community. Those are always coming out of the objectives or almost always coming out of the objectives set by the group. So those are reflecting the priorities of 30 to 40 different organizations um, in what we're all agreeing to focus on, even if it's not that particular organization's thing. Um, so this newsletter that you folks get goes out to uh, approximately 600 leaders in the community each week. And we ask folks to share it out and you'll see it shared out by your library and you'll see it shared out by your schools and you'll see it shared out by your houses of worship. And they don't all share all the parts of it, but the idea is that in Lamoille, the way people know what's going on is they turn to the people they know. And so we wanna make sure the people who are turned to have the information. So this is one um, aspect of our public information, which is really the outward public facing aspect of what we're doing, but it's, it's just that there's so much going on that's behind the scenes. Um, and so, for example, this vaccination stuff here, there's been a real push with our health partners on very specific vaccination information. And so that is going in in these very specific ways. You know, we had an objective around BIPOC vaccination, and so that's being shared there. It's not all the vaccine information that's coming out, but it's what's specific to needing to share um, in our county. Um, and then I want to also bring up the United Way of Lamoille County resource page because everything that goes in that newsletter ends up on this resource page as well. So if you have anybody, anytime anyone asks you any questions, you can come to this resource page and get the answer. And we distributed 10,000 business cards with this website and QR code all over the county, not just in organizations, but at Cumbies and at gas stations and at Dunkin's and you could get these cards and scan the QR code and get this information. So you'll see here that, you know, these are sort of the more time sensitive stuff that's gonna 
um, evaporate soon is down here. But up here, you'll see, for example, I'll go to teenagers because I was just recently on that one. You know, if you come here and you're looking for mental health supports for teenagers, it'll take you over to the mental health page. But if you are looking for something else relating to teenagers, all the information that you might need related to teenagers is gonna be here. Um, so, and then if you go back over here, you might be looking for employment. And there's gonna be all sorts of employment information here. So the, the idea is that no matter what you're looking for when you come to this page, did I just stop screen sharing? Good. Okay. Whatever you're looking for when you come to this page, you're going to be able to find sometimes in several different places if you're looking in several different places. And it's all going to relate to the information that's coming out from all of our health and human services organizations. And it's constantly improving. Um, so I'm going to give one small example of one of the successes we've had. And then I'll let Corey give whatever her favorite example is. Um, so the example I think I'm going to give um, tonight, this is a new one for me, Corey, um, is that um, we had an objective around harm reduction packs and specifically around Narcan. And the objective came from our substance misuse team wanting to make sure that when people were, especially when people were in their homes and you know we were supposed to be staying home or staying away from people, it's easing a little now, but it's been a long 14 months, um, was to make sure that uh, harm reduction to go packs were being distributed around the county and specifically that Narcan was being distributed. And so that involved a lot of our different teams distributing it, our public information, sharing that information. And I don't have the latest numbers, but we've had several deaths averted in our area due to that those packs and that Narcan being distributed. And when we all pull together, there's a huge uptick in the requests going to North Central Vermont Recovery Center for those resources. I'm gonna hand it over to Corey. I love that one, Emily. Um, mine's somewhat similar. So I've been thinking last summer when we were turning the spigot and trying to get business back, businesses back to reopening and they were trying to reopen in this unknown new world. So our employment team gathered an enormous list of businesses. They put out a survey and ask them, what do you need to reopen? Uh, and really trying to identify, is it education? Is it PPE, cleaning supplies? What do you need, what do you need to do? And so we, we gathered all that data. And while the employment team really got a list of resources for the businesses in terms of financial support and what their employees might need, our finance team applied for grants, was able to get funds, put together 50 business reopening kits. So they had touchless thermometers, PPE, hands, yeah, more resources. And then we had planning and logistics, get those kits out to 50 businesses. And that's really special. You know, that's the group is trying to meet the needs of our community where they're at, you know, and this is constantly changing in this world. That's one, one example of how we're working across organizations to meet the needs of the community. And so this is really something special. And so when we look to these towns, what we really want to do ask you for is just let us know how we can help you and help your community think of us if you something comes up if you have a problem know that we're here um, and Emily I mean I think most of you might she might be on your radar you might be on her radar watch out but uh, definitely uh, think of us. so thank you so much for letting us come and share this with you yeah this um, seems questions? like a really it seems like a great community resource database you know, I think the, one of the big things is uh, for people, how do they get to you? You know, how do they get to that resource? That's going to be the question, you know, easy way. Well, the hope is that every single person on every select board is sharing that website that um, people are saying, you know, do you want to get this distribution? There's one woman I'm thinking of in particular who she doesn't have an official role in the community. She just asked to be on the, somebody had sent her the newsletter. She asked to be on the distribution list. She works in a daycare. She goes in every single week and shares the information out with the families. And so we, we really, really hope for your help in making sure people know that these resources are available. Put it on our website now. 
Which, yeah. could you, I, I'm just looking through some of my emails that I have access to on my phone, and what's the name of the um, newsletter? What would it come up, what would the title be into our it emails? Comes in, it comes, it has a different title each week, depending on what the information is in it. Um, so you should have gotten one this morning, and it would have Construction 101 in it. No, I, I don't see anything on my email. Huh, I wonder if yours is going to spam. Lisa, I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my email address in the chat. And if you wanna be on this newsletter, you just send me an email. Okay, I'm also asking how do, how do folks get access to you if they don't have internet or if they're elderly or whatever? That is an excellent question. So this is part of why we need feedback from the community. Hold on, I can't type and think at the same time, hold on. Uh, I just want to make sure I did it correctly. Okay. Um, Corey, check that, make sure I typed it right. Um, so it's part of why we need the help of the community. You know, we, I do have a column that goes in the paper once a month, um, which is also a way of reaching folks. We don't have a phone number because we're not like one organization. But if often I hear from somebody who's trying to help somebody, but if you have ideas, Take that email address. Let me know what your thoughts are and how we could expand our access, please. Dan just brought up uh, using 211, the information network with us. Is that they're correct? right at the top of the resource page because they're, they're an amazing resource. This is in addition to, it's both and. Now, can we have this link put on our town website? So Bob, this is Sarah Haskins. I heard you say that um, I already have put a link on the town website it's on the it's in our community links maybe Very i need good. to relabel it different but it's something about like lamoille county resources um and judy um look for an an email from emily emily sends the emails okay thank you yeah i saw it i saw it today yeah i saw it i get it twice once from rotary and also from uh, yeah. the town website mm -hmm. People have but a this lot of is great. Yeah, it usually goes to that through point to get yeah. more teams. Yeah, but that's what that means. Yeah. It's getting, it's probably spam, you think? Yeah, okay. it does align. Now. I'll check on you know, spam. You know, I, I, I'd ask some folks, Ms. Derek from Mike board, if you would send a hard copy, I know it's old school, hang with me. <laughs> if you would send it to the law enforcement agencies in this county, Stolen Oil and Morrison in particular, State police a little harder to make it to connect with you. Got to go through the Willis and barracks, but that way they can bring it to a staff meeting. They can talk about it. It gives them a great, quick reference point. Because not everything happens Monday to Friday, eight to four thirty. So a lot of the stuff they run into uh, might very well fit into some organization within that network you've got listed there. It might might be handy for them to have that. Yeah, it does go to as many of the law enforcement folks as I was able to gather. I, I spent a couple of days calling all the law enforcement and getting email addresses from them. So a lot of them are getting it, but I would love if you'd take my email address and shoot me an email, and then maybe I could ask you to review my list and see who I missed. Well, I think what they're saying, uh, Jason Luno is here, one of our sergeants from the police department, and Garth Christensen as well, the other sergeant, and they're saying that your messages when it comes into their uh, email of being quarantined. That's why I'm asking if you would send a hard copy of some of your information to the PDs so they can put it in, put it in their staff meetings and, uh, and discuss it there. I could certainly do that. And if it's being quarantined, if they add me to their contacts, I think it probably won't be unless it's- Right, right. Because there's exactly. a lot of links in there. So they're gonna wanna be able to access the links too. But That's everything on there, here's the good thing. Everything on there is on the resource page. So if they just mark on their phones that resource page, whenever something comes up, they'll be able to get all that information. Okay. That's great. Everything goes on there. Thank you for asking. That's awesome. And we will work on ways to increase our reach to the law enforcement. Thank you. Great. Is there any other questions for Emily or Corey? Ryan, how about you? No, nope, all set, thank you. This is great information. We appreciate the presentation tonight. Yeah, very we'll good. Spread the word. Thank you so much. You guys have a great night. Thank you. Thank you.
All right, we'll go next one. Jane Campbell, Memorial FiberNet Communications. I saw you on there, Jane, you still there? I'm still here, can you hear me okay? Yes, welcome. Great, uh, for the record, I'm Jane Campbell. I live and vote in Morristown. I'm also the Morristown representative of Lamoille FiberNet, which is the communications union district in Lamoille County, um, the organization that's working to bring high-speed broadband to our eight member towns, which includes Morristown. Um, just an overview, the path that we're aiming for is for Lamoille FiberNet to build the fiber network, and then we will partner with internet service provider or providers to provide the service. Um, we've been making good progress. We've begun conversations with providers. We've got the draft business plan that LCPC contracted for. And this is, this is a huge multi-year effort. Uh, the business plan estimates that it's going to cost a total of 25 million to cover those eight towns. Um, the business plan also builds the network in six stages or areas, uh, starting with the most underserved areas. Um, and then using the revenues from those areas to build the next stage, the next stage, the next stage. I'm sorry to have to tell you that Morristown Hyde Park is one of those areas and we are last on the list because we are, believe it or not, the best served, even though about a quarter of our residences don't have um, adequate, what, what the federal government considers adequate broadband. Um, altogether, there are nine communication districts, we call them CUDs in the state and the legislature uh, passed the law enabling these because historically there's been a pattern where the for-profit providers come into a town or an area and they build the main routes, the most densely populated routes, which are the highest revenue producing, and then they leave. So the, the areas with the lower density population are, are left behind. Um, the CUD, our mission is to build out all areas in the grid. Um, and I understand it. They have, you know, they have uh, shareholders. They need to make the profit. And I know some of the for-profit providers also have a mission of building all addresses. But it's a question of how much of a priority is that for them before they move on to the next area. So today, I'm not uh, making a specific request, but I am giving you a heads up on the funding um, that we expect to come to the town from the Federal American Rescue Plan Act. Uh, the rules of that are still being finalized. Um, so this is just a heads up and we'll come back once we know more details. We, we do know that the funds will need to be spent by December 31st, 2024. Um, we do know that the act includes funds for counties and towns uh, as well as the state. Um, Preliminary estimates look like Morristown might receive $540,000, but that may change. I, I read something that said that if there's a village involved, it might include the village differently. It's, it's, that, that's still sort of to be determined. And our understanding so far is that the funds can be used for infrastructure like water, sewage, uh, sewer, or broadband infrastructure. Um, so we're asking the select board to just keep Lamoille FiberNet in mind. Uh, you know, about 40% of Lamoille County's addresses lack access at the speeds of 25 or three or better. Um, only 4% can purchase the 100 over 100 internet, which is really what you need nowadays to be able to download and upload. Um, so I guess all I'm saying is just please keep us in mind. You know, our mission is to serve all the addresses. We're not trying to make a profit. We're going to try and keep it as affordable as possible. And once we know more specifics on the act, we're going to come back to you. But um, if you have questions at this point, I'm happy to try and answer them. Great. Thanks, Jane. Any questions on the board? No, nope. Brian? No, all set. Thanks. Well, I do have a question. I was wondering, Jane, do you have any idea um, what it would cost to provide the broadband to the quarter percent of people who don't have it in our town right now? I don't know that. Um, I could maybe dig into it because I know the per mile estimate, et cetera, although the mile, the per mile cost jumps if they have underground conduits like what you were just talking about earlier. Um, I do know that if, if you look at building the network 
the part that we plan to build in the Morristown Hyde Park area, that's $10 million. Um, I don't know just for the 25%. And the way it works is, you know, the reason that we're going to start with the, the most underserved areas is because those, again, are the higher revenue producing areas. And then we can use those revenues to build the next area, the next, the next. Um, yeah, I don't have that. I can dig a little bit and get back to you if I can find that though, Judy. Thank you. Great. Gary, any comment? No, I guess I'm also, I was, I was kind of wondering how much uh, of that uh, funding was going to come our way. Uh, sounds like you're talking 540,000 plus or minus whatever they're going to do for the villages. And uh, that's preliminary. That's, right. that's the that's first chart that's we've gonna, seen. Right. And that's going to include infrastructure work for all the, for any infrastructure, not just the broadband. Is that correct? I don't know if it's any infrastructure. It isn't just for broadband, though. It's, a, it's the same one that I briefed the board about, I think, two weeks right. or so ago. Yeah. Um, like that's right. Again, there's, you know, we don't know the rules or how it has to be right. spent or, or what the, the process is. Once again, with federal money, it's, it's how the process will work. Something. Right. Um, there's right. a lot of questions on that, but nobody has right. the ability to answer right now. Right. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Jane. Thanks for giving us a heads up. All right. And thank you for your time. Bye bye. Have a good evening. Bye. Have a good evening. Thank you. All right. Next, approve and remove parks and rec bylaws and remove member. It really should be just approved bylaws. Okay. Yeah. And then remove a, a, a member. Yes. So yeah, this is. Okay. Go ahead, Sarah. This is Sarah Haskins. Do you want me to speak or do you want to speak, Judy? No, go ahead, Sarah. Thank you. Okay. Um, so basically, um, there's some revised bylaws. Not much has changed. Just um, we were doing an annual review of them. They were written a long time ago, and we just wanted to make sure that they were current with um, current VLCT uh, rules and laws. Is there any big changes to these uh, bylaws? No. I think so. Makes for exciting reading, though. <laughs> it, it's mostly language cleanup. Right. We're, we're very fortunate that one of our board members is an attorney. And so she um, just was making sure that the, all the current statutes were in them. Great. All right, does someone want to make a motion to this? I make a motion we adopt the um, current bylaws for parks and rec that are before us. As presented, right? As presented, yes. I have a motion by Judy. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Gary. Should I recuse myself since I'm on the committee? Do I have to do that? I don't think you have to in this case, no. Okay, all right. Is there any further discussion? Bob. Go ahead, yeah. Brian. The one question I asked, it says the majority of the members of the body shall constitute a quorum. Now, is that the majority of five? It's five members. Uh, yeah. It's the majority of the um, members, the, the appointed board members. Okay, that's what I wanted. It was the appointed members or whether it was a majority of the ones that showed up. No, so it's... Right. Yeah. So it's like a select board. Correct. Yeah, we, we can't that, have a meeting if there's not over no, at least three people. Correct. Three people. That's okay. actually one of that's that's probably the biggest change. The old bylaws didn't have it stated that way. That's how yeah. we were practicing, knowing that that's what the law was. But yeah. in reviewing the bylaws, that's not how the um, 1999 bylaws were written. Okay. That's the only thing I caught. I wasn't sure. Thanks, Brian. Welcome. All right. All in favor, say aye. Brian? Aye. Gary? Aye. Judy? Aye. Eric? Aye. Motion is passed unanimously. Now we have a removed member. Go ahead. Go ahead, Sarah. 
Um, unfortunately, Valerie Valcor has resigned. Um, she is doing amazing efforts with um, COVID testing and vaccination. She works for the health department and she just can't um, dedicate her time to Parks and Rec at the moment. Um, so we're sorry to lose her, but we're hoping at some time in the future she can join back on. Okay, so want to make a motion? I make a motion that we remove Valerie Valcourt's name from Parks and Recreation. All right, I have a motion by Judy. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Gary. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye, Brian. Aye. Gary? Aye. Judy? With regret, aye. Eric? Aye. Motion is passed unanimously. All right, thanks, Sarah. Next, approve the purchase of highway trucks. Kevin? Yeah, those are the uh, two trucks, the tandem and a single axle, one for uh, the copper shop and one for the village shop that were approved last fall. Same, same ones. Same trucks. Yeah. I thought they looked familiar. They're already in the budget. They just need to. Right. This is how the budget was built. This is the, the bids that were from, or not bids, but the, the cost comparisons from last fall. And how right. we That's why I was thinking, didn't we do this already? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you, proved, uh, you proved them to budget them. Right. But right. we have to ha ask the board to approve the expenditure of the money that we had approved in the budget. Okay. Do I hear a motion regarding this? Uh, in reference no. to the 2022 <laughs> International Pandem. I move we approve the purchase of that vehicle from Clark's for a total purchase price of $131,248.75. This includes a seven year warranty, $50,000 to be utilized in the Highway Capital Equipment Fund, and financing the balance for five years. All right, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Second by Brian. <laughs> Is there any further dis discussion? All in favor say aye, Brian. Aye. Gary. Aye. Judy. Aye. Eric. Aye. Motion is passed unanimously. I move we approve the purchase of a body for the 2022 International Tandem from Vikings for a total price of $66,700. I have a motion by Eric. Do I have a second? Aye. Second. Brian. Se second by Gary. <laughs> is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye, Brian. Aye. Got to be quicker, Brian. Yes. Gary? Aye. Judy? Aye. Eric? Aye. Motion is passed unanimously. In reference to the 2022 International Dump Truck, I move that we approve the purchase of the 2022 International Dump Truck from Clark's for a total purchase price of $97,535. This includes a seven year warranty. $50,000 to be utilized from the Highway Capital Fund and financing the balance for five years. All right, I have a motion by Eric. Do I have a second? Brian? <laughs> second. <laughs> just under the wire. Here is just about to say. Uh, is there any further discussion on this? All in favor say aye, Brian. Aye. Gary? Aye. Judy? Aye. Eric? Aye. Motion is passed unanimously. I move we approve the purchase of a body for the 2022 International Dump Truck from Viking for a total price of $66,500. I have a motion by Eric. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Brian. Brian. Hey, Brian. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye, Brian. Aye. Gary? Aye. Judy? Aye. Eric? Aye. Motion is passed unanimously. All right. Next, we're, we eliminated number five from uh, the Green Mountain ATV writers. They withdrew their proposal, but they are going to resubmit it in a short amount of time uh, by, by May 10th, I believe, right? That's correct. Right. Okay. So we'll move to number six, and that is Schedule of public ATV meeting. Now, we talked about this a little bit. Um, we've had a lot of concerned citizens reach out to me and, and Dan and some of the other board members 
about the fact that we had scheduled the meeting for May 17th, um, which which we can, as of May 1st, you can meet in groups up to 300 people um, outside. Um, that's unvaccinated people outside, as many vaccinated people as you want. Um, but a lot of people in the community feel like it's too soon and don't feel safe enough to meet uh, this soon. So we've been talking about it uh, back and forth, uh, not, not as a group, but um, individually. And um, we've come up with possibility of, of waiting until uh, j after July 4th, which is the governor's expected to op open everything up, um, thank God, and um, do away with masks and, and also give everybody plenty of time to be vaccinated by that time and um, hopefully feel more comfortable uh, being able to meet outside. We um, still have the same venue in mind uh, down at the Oxbow, same um, same schedule, maybe have the select board meeting. We're, we're talking about July 6th. Uh, 5th is a Monday and the 6th is a Tuesday. We Monday's the holiday uh, observed for 4th of July. So we're talking about Tuesday, July 6th. Have our regular meeting here at um, 5 o'clock and then adjourn the meeting here after our normal business is done and move it to the Oxbow for 6 o'clock and then invite invite the public to attend and um, it will be uh, handled by, we're going to have a sound person handled by um, uh, Peter Guion, I think, from, he'll do all the sound. We're going to have power there. We'll be able to pass the microphone around and let people speak. We, we have not yet come up with um, some rules, if you have it. We're going to try to, try to probably have it like a town meeting style where we hopefully will have a moderator we haven't secured a moderator as of yet, but we're, we're, we're going to try to find one. And then we'll give each person a chance to speak and come to the microphone and, uh, and say whatever their opinions are. So that's what uh, we're looking at right now for scheduling. I don't know if any of the board wants to chime in on any of that. Uh, have I covered it? Yeah, I think it works for me. I think just, you know, we, we did, Sarah, Trisha, and I, because Sarah has a lot of contacts for the, the being able to, to broadcast and coordinate something like that. Um, in, in, in conjunction with Green Mountain Access TV, we talked and, and we kind of really explored the idea about trying to do the hybrid meeting where it's 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 both people calling in. And quite frankly, we we kind kind of came all came to the conclusion that, that would be very very difficult to do. You know, in July we will probably have web or uh, Wi-Fi down at the Oxco by that point in time. At least that's our goal. Um, I think we can probably easily do that. But this particular meeting, we probably will be able to broadcast it, but we don't know if we'll be able to make it interactive from somebody staying at home. Taking questions. Taking or questions. people speaking. I mean, we'll be, I, I'm reasonably confident uh, from what we understood that broadcasting is not a problem. Green Mountain Access TV should be able to broadcast this. But we're not sure that we can do an interactive meeting and a public meeting at the same time. And we're still going to try, but you know, um, it, it just that there's an awful lot of barriers to be able to do that at a remote location like the Oxbow Park. Right. So just to, so everybody understands what we're trying to attempt. Um, that this, this meeting, the primary, if you want to speak, the, the, the best um, opportunity to speak will be to be in person. Come to the meeting. Uh, the other thing that uh, we're going to do is give people plenty of notice. It's going to be in the paper. It's going to be on our website. It's going to be on Front Porch Forum. Um, we do have now a link on our on our website. Uh, thanks to Sarah Hyde, uh, she's got a link set up so um, everybody can go to that and see where we're at with uh, with ATVs. You know um, what the next step is, and it's going to have all this information on there as well. Uh, but this will give everybody a chance to uh, say what they think. Uh, the other question that we just, just come up last time, last discussion was whether or not we're going to allow um, outsiders, and um, it's my opinion that we wouldn't. I did, I did talk about uh, possibly, you know, I don't know that they're going to ask to or be there, but uh, possibly a couple people that might be uh, the chair of the select board in Johnson, for example, or the chair of the select board in Hyde Park, 
which allow ATVs. And just for reference, they're not not uh, for or against, just to informational kind of thing because they have gone through it all. They've they've done everything that we're going through right now, and they they know a lot about it that we don't. And that was going to be my only thing I might add. I I would not like to see uh, out of staters be um, you know speaking, especially taking taking away speaking time for Morristown residents, because this is a time where Morristown residents get to say what they think. Um, and that's uh, that's my opinion. I, I don't know if the rest of the board feels the same way, uh, but uh, that's how I feel on it. I, I see Ed's got a question up there. He's raising his hand. Um, uh, it's not a question. I just wanted to say well done, wisely decided all the way around. Good for you guys. Thank you. Will the meeting be kind of a um, in, informational gathering, just sharing information and taking people's concerns? That's what we're doing, right? Right, yeah. right. And, and actually, that's that's good you brought that up because the intent of our board is uh, to have it go to a town vote. Uh, we don't know yet when that town vote would be. There is there is a possibility that that town vote could happen um, sooner rather than later because of you know, after that meeting because of the, the situation with the school vote that's gonna happen, most likely, we don't know for sure either. Sarah, do you wanna go over that a little bit again too, the, the possibility of that and what might happen if we have to vote on the school issue? Um, can you rephrase your question? I'm not really sure what you're uh, asking. Just, uh, you spoke very well last time. Um, if Stowe has their vote, Okay. to uh, disassociate from LSU. In that case, when that, hap that vote happens on May 11th, I believe. Yes, so Stowe votes on, votes on May 11th. If Stowe votes to unmerge, then Morristown and Elmore have to vote whether or not we will allow them to unmerge. But there's no set date when we would do that. We just have to do that on... Um, the same day and in the same way and in the same hours. Right. But so I don't could, really have any details. I think we're waiting till May 11th to kind of plan. Right, right. I'm just, it's, it's a potential thing that we could have an article on there about ATVs if that happened. Is there any other questions? Any comments from our board? Lisa's got a question. Is it okay to talk, Bob? Go ahead, Lisa. Um, so as far as pushing this out to July 4th, um, I'm kind of not okay with that, I think, but I guess that's just my opinion. However, I did start a petition through my community to get 5% of my Vermont, my uh, Morseville voters um, to sign petitions. And I've got, I've got that. Um, what do I do from here? What does this do for me? I, this, this is close to my home. Okay. I have a daughter who's terminally ill. She can't get out and socialize because of COVID. This is the one thing that she's able to do. And I am very strong about this and keep pushing this away to a different time. It's just, it's bothersome to me. I understand. Dan, you want to explain that? I don't know if you really do though, Bob. That's the I do. I, I mean, I know you do. I know you do as a person. I just, it's frustrating to me that a handful, I'm getting emotional, I'm sorry, that um, a handful of my community members are being so aggressive and stern about something that I honestly think that they're totally uneducated about. I, I personally don't wanna ride Main Street and all these other roads, okay? I wanna get from Fraser Road to Trombley Hill to connect to Cleveland Corner so I can get my daughter and my family out and having some good time out in the wilderness. That's all I'm asking. I'm not asking to go down to go to Hoagies or to the car wash anything like that. Right. I just, I, I, want, I want to make sure that the community knows that what we're asking for is, is not what they're being perceived, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And I want to know 
the process from start to finish on how to get this to happen and to happen promptly and with very you know thought out that's all i'm asking that's reasonable did you want to I'll just, you know, and Sarah, please correct me if I'm wrong here, because this part of this is a town clerk issue and part of this is a select board issue. So I'm going to try to speak to both. If, it, if it's a petition that you're looking to have the select board do something, in other words, force a town vote on this, that goes to Sarah. Sarah will review and make sure the signatures are valid. Yep. The other piece of that, too, is that not all things are petitionable. You know, like you can petition the select board to have a vote on overturning the ordinance. You can, there are certain things in statute that allows the citizens of the town to petition the select board to do something. I think we would have to take this particular question and forward it to, you know, our, our attorney that we use in this case, it would be Jim Barlow, to see if these was one of those things that it's a valid petition and that the, the town would be required to have a town meeting on this subject. Okay. So, you know, okay. but the petition really needs to start with Sarah, and I think um, hopefully Sarah is listening. And, um, and we've talked, Sarah and I have talked, so. Vermont, um, Vermont leagues of city and town says this is, this is get a petition, bring it to the town and it's a votable matter. Well, you know, I, I appreciate Vermont leagues of cities and towns, but you know, once again, you know, we, we have an attorney and actually he used to work for Vermont leagues of cities and towns. Okay. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll take it to our attorney and review it and we'll see what everything says, you know, but really once again, um, it, it begins with Sarah and turning the petition into Sarah. Okay. Sarah, are you, are, are, am I saying things correct from a, a town clerk point of view, Sarah? You are. And Lisa and I had a lengthy conversation about it. And I think she understood what she had to do in my role. Basically, my office is just, she would turn it into me. My office um, only is going to validate that you have the correct number of signatures. Yep. And from the checklist and then um, we'll let you know whether or not you have the um, right number of signatures. And then I'm gonna hand it over to the select board to um, figure out the if they and, can have them. The and then what happens from there? Once you hand it to the select board, what are their obligations from there? That's what, that's what I need an opinion from the town attorney on. Right. So you can't answer that right now? Right, I cannot. Okay. Uh, as as I and how long can you give me a date when that could be discussed on and and get back to me on? I, I I can't. I haven't seen. You know, once again, it begins getting the petition turned into Sarah and let Sarah validate the signatures. Okay. So the the second part of this question, this uh, my my question is, I emailed you and Bob Eman uh, a little while ago um, a a proposal for permission to use Fraser Road in Trombley Hill. Um, to connect to Cleveland Corner. So I just want that on record that, that I sent that to you and I hope that you can acknowledge it in uh, a, a response from the email, an email, please. Yes, and I, and I think that, um, I think that's part of why the ATV club has um, withdrawn their proposal because it was really uh, broad strokes, if you will. Um, and, and that, uh, you know, didn't have really specific areas. And that's part of why um, so many community members are really up in arms about the possibility of their their road being allowed, you know. And, um, but I know that they're gonna really work on revising that proposal and bring it back to us. And, um, and then we'll go from there. But, um, and also hopefully, um, you know, put at ease the minds of so many that so many have gotten 50 emails about, um, but you know it's a it's a big important topic, and a lot of people feel like it's going to change their quality of life. A lot of people feel like it's going to change their property values. Um, there's a lot of opinions on it, and you know we want to hear everybody's opinion. And once we get a proposal in front of us, once we can check out what what we're talking about with this uh, petition, but meanwhile that's the plan. We. We've, uh, we're waiting for a proposal from the ATV club and we're gonna have this because there were so many people talking about they're not feeling safe. Um, we had to push it till, at least till it's gonna be totally open. You know, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, things are going really, really well right now. The governor could say, you know, mid June, he's gonna open it up. 
that his timeline is July 4th right now, but that's why we were trying well, to be I, diligent. Right, I understand. And you know, the VFW just had a big old dance with people unmasked right. over there in an inside building. So I don't know why we can't have a meeting outside. Right. Well, that's, I mean, I just think that's ridiculous, but that's my opinion. Thank you. Is there any other comments by our, anyone on the board or anybody in, Ed's got a, got a comment, yeah. go ahead. Ed. I personally am not opposed uh, to finding, uh, to your finding a place where you can uh, ride your uh, machines in peace and enjoyment. Um, I, you know, uh, whatever hobby you pursue, uh, as long as you're not directly hurting somebody, I think fine. I encourage you to do that. The the uh, yeah, um, uh, I think a better solution might be finding a middle ground here. We, we're not at that point yet, but um, I spent two hours researching, and I think it was Kevin Lane that uh, emailed a bunch of us. Um, some graphics demonstrating that there are no dedicated actual real ATV trails in this area. Um, the maps that I could find, um, uh, the, the serious maps are behind a paywall and I didn't, didn't want to pay for uh, a Garmin or whoever it was for access to them. But we found some that are designated as ATV trails. Uh, for example, around Johnson. And when you look at them, they're all named uh, public uh, rights of way. So um, it seems we're getting two, two different messages here. If we could straighten that out, I think that would be a good start. As you say, perhaps we're misperceiving it. Um, I'd like to know where um, dedicated established ATV trails are in this immediate area uh, that are not in fact roads. Um, I'll give you my email address by back channel, and and the easiest way to do this is just you know show me what you're talking about. I'll go see it uh, again. Perhaps there's something we're missing. You see, so I'll 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 on chat here back channel chat. I'll send you my email address, and I'll be interested in 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 doing that i spent a couple hours but you could probably provide a shortcut i'm sure okay Thanks, is, is there anybody from the atv club that's listening tonight that has any comment i've not seen anybody on there i'm just wondering uh would it, make, would it make any difference what the title of the uh, petition is very much so that's the reason why it really needs to, to start with sarah great you know um and, and sarah you know once again nobody here on town staff we, we we don't help people right we give them you know secretary of state's office whatever um because we're totally impartial but then right. you, know, you gotta understand if it's a valid petition and it's a valid you know thing that the select board has to call a town meeting about we're, we're required to use the language that we provide. We can't change the language. We can't do anything with it. It's what the voters, you know, those registered voters uh, are members of the town that are on the voter checklist. It's what they've signed. So we don't change anything. Um, it, you know, Sarah will give them as much help as possible about the process. Right. Once again, right. not content. Not content. Oh, okay. it, all be, it all begins yeah. with the petition being turned into the town clerk's office. Did you understand that, Lisa? No. No, I don't understand that. Could you? I could you please repeat that? I'm sorry. Well, I just I just wondered if it would make a difference of the title of the petition, whether it is uh, would pass muster with the within the state statutes, or whether the select board has to review it or not. Right. Okay. So changing changing the title to okay. I see what you're saying. I would threaten the content. We we don't handle that. Any of the town doesn't handle that. We we can help with the process, but not the content. You understand that? Okay. Does anybody this else is, have any? This is this is Sarah Go Haskins. Go ahead, so Sarah. yeah, I I think that Gary is correct that how how your petition is written is um, the language is very important 
about whether or not something a vote would have to take place or not but i don't know what that language would be that's what this the vlct or secretary of state saw i was just gonna ask you that sarah um because yeah, my... i don't know what it what it what it needs to be okay because mine's very clear as to what i'm personally asking for um from specific roads to um yeah specific roads i'm being very clear in it um it's the petition is all over morseville i don't know if you can see it but um it's at hoagies it's everywhere and um so i don't, I don't know what to change on it because you obviously just said you didn't know the verbiage so if this is not if you're telling me that this is no good because of verbiage i'm going to be upset because you didn't make that clear to me when we discussed that a while ago and i put a lot of time effort um i've met we don't people, know that. you know i this means a lot to me and i'm trying to help my community because they don't have a voice because they're afraid of all this comeback and you know me i have no problem expressing my feelings so here i am and i just feel like i'm wasting my time and energy when i could be doing it elsewhere i mean i could be the bad egg and just do what everybody else is doing and going down the roads and not being ethical um but that's not where i want to go i will if i have to but i don't want to thanks lisa yeah uh shelly shelly you have a question uh, not a question. Um, not a question. I just uh, wanted to thank you, Bob, and the the other select board members for um, for hearing concerns from community members about the the informational meeting and for um, for moving that to to when everyone can be fully vaccinated. I just like to thank you for that. Um, I do think it is imperative that we have an impartial moderator to facilitate that informational meeting. So I'm glad that's on your radar and that you're you're investigating that further. Thank you. You're welcome. Go ahead, sir. Can you introduce yourself. Uh, yeah, I'm Tom Cloutier. I, I want to second what uh, Shelley just said. That uh, I certainly agree with her for uh, the way you're handling this. So uh, I, I would also maybe like to, if uh, make a suggestion, if the uh, school would be a possibility in July, because that way, I mean, uh, we could all meet inside if that would. Uh, be a choice. I don't no, know. No, the gymnasium is going, it's going to be um, renovated. Renovated. Or oh, oh yeah. Okay. And, and one other little thing, just to like a minute ago, uh, one of your ATVs was doing the unethical thing and driving down the road here on Silver Ridge. And I got a nice video. If you want, Lisa, I can send it to you so you could might get a hold of him, and we wouldn't want him not knowing that it was closed and get a ticket or something like that, so. Of course, uh, Tom, and I have actually gone down that road and chased people down and told them to knock it off and that, yeah. you know, I've yeah. done well, that. You've probably- Well, seen lately it's been, it been very quiet. It was just kind of ironic that this uh, ATV is headed down the road while we're here discussing yeah, yeah. not yeah, yeah. running down the road. But uh, anyway, thank you. A lot of people aren't aware that it's closed and they should be. Any Anybody from the club should know it doesn't open for two weeks. Right. But, uh, there's always people, like I said, uh, there was a four wheeler on my road yesterday. So, yeah, that sign I'm sure will help. Well, sign. just so you know, Hyde Park has their roads open year round, yeah. and yeah. half of Silver Ridge Road is part of Hyde Park. So, they're probably just I'm not saying it's right, but that's that's probably why you're seeing it. That's all right. That and, and I agree, and I, I'm sure that a sign will. Uh, alleviate that problem and that uh, you know i don't want to see them getting a ticket for anything either so thank, thank you, you. Sign, signs at both ends thank you is there any other comments all right we'll move to approve the warrants make a motion to approve the warrants second i have a motion by eric and a second by judy any further discussion all in favor say aye, Brian. Aye. Gary? Aye. Judy? Aye. Eric? Aye. Motion is passed unanimously. TA report. Two things for me. Um, Sarah has 
put a link up underneath the community links or community interest, I think, for ATVs. Our, our goal is to put everything related ATVs into that link so the public can find it easy. I think we're going to put the links to the, the select board meetings where we're discussing ATVs and anything in general. Any schedule we put out or any proposal um, that the community wants to find, that way it's out there and it's, it's going to be easier for the public to find. So thanks to Sarah for doing that. And, and just spread that out there. You know, um, there's been some discussions about whether we're being, you know, transparent. I think we're being as transparent as we can, and we're going to put all the information out there for the public to make a decision um, and, and to see what's going on. So that link is on our webpage. If you need any help finding us, finding it, just give us a call, and, and we can help you find it here. Um, the other thing, too, um, just based on looking at staff, especially in the town offices, on when I think the, it'll be safe to open the back up town offices to the general public. Once again, you know, for business, not necessarily all the spaces be open, but I think we're, we're looking at June 7th. I think safely the town spaces can be back open to the public. Right. Um, you know, the bathrooms may not be open, but people should be able to come in. Um, we're still going to have some COVID protocols in place, but I think for the most part, staff will all be or have had the opportunity to be fully vaccinated by that point in time. So that's kind of our goal right now. And unless something throws us off schedule on that, that's kind of the goal that we have for Nice. open to the public. And maybe you'll have that on the website too. Yeah, I'm, 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 we're, we're getting a little bit closer. I want to make sure that everything progresses for the staff to be able to, to get to that fully vaccinated point and, and a little bit beyond that second shot. So that's that's our kind of our goal right now. And, and I don't see anything that will really prevent a staff member from achieving that. We're just keeping an eye on it. Once again, it's based on availability. Um, EMS has been great, even if there's open slots. You know, they, you know, they sometimes they get noticed where we don't. Um, Paul has been great helping people find appointments. He's done that well. So I mean, we're, we're all working together to get everybody. To, anybody who wants to get a vaccination, once again, we're not forcing them to, um, um, but we're we're being as helpful as we can to to get the employees vaccinated as soon as we can get them vaccinated, so that we can open back up to the public. Great. That's all I have. That's it. Any questions for Dan? All right, thank you. Excuse me, just the ATV ordinance is also on the website, right? Um, I can put the draft. We don't have a, an ordinance. I, I'm sorry, no, not the ordinance, statute. 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 There, is a, there is a link to the state statute. Um, and there's a lot of questions that people are asking, you know, in regards to registration, liability insurance, all that other fun stuff. That's that's well, covered. A lot of information on there. So, um, but the statute's there, and it's a, it's a great read if you haven't read it, especially for people out there. Go read the statute. See what the state's requiring the, the select boards, what the authority of the select board is here in the particular yeah. case, and what the responsibilities are of the ATV riders as well. Right. Yeah, I just I read it again today. The so whole thing. Yeah, and I was surprised to see that they, if there's an ATV on the road on a public highway. It's called a motor vehicle. Motor vehicle. It's referred to as a motor vehicle. Simple as that. Right. No matter how it's classified, it's called a motor vehicle. Right. So, yeah, that's a good read. I encourage everybody to read that, even though it's a long read. Um, all right. Uh, select board concerns. Brian. Yeah, just uh, I've been busy because I, with my two shots that I took, I got a little sick with both of them. So, I haven't got a chance to check it out, but how about the crosswalks? How are we coming? Um, we got to be painted soon, I think. We haven't really got a chance to paint now. We haven't got a chance to paint yet. With the weather has been a little too cold. Yeah, it hasn't been great to paint quite yet. Yep. Okay. Thanks, Brian. I, that was uh, on my mind too. Somebody, a couple of people asked me about that. Thank you. Yeah, I just Here. like to, you know, make sure that we're keeping up on it because the sooner the better, you know, with people trying to cross roads. And I had yeah, got a yeah. yeah, but we're we're working on the sweeping already, and as soon as we can get through sweeping, then we'll work towards painting. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Brian. Gary. Uh, it was on uh, my list of things to talk about. I just wanted to thank Kevin for putting up the crosswalk signs over on Harold Street. I won't have to be accosted by a pedestrian anymore for that. So. That's done. And as a matter of fact, he was walking by as they were putting the signs up. So it worked perfect. Um, and uh, the 4th of July, are we on for 4th of July festivities this year? The fireworks are already scheduled. 
you know, um, and you know, and quite honestly, it doesn't take much to put together a prick. I can, Eric, teach, I can learn that. I can teach anybody how to do it. Look at about it. You're right? Uh, no, but just, uh, my just my concern was uh, I'm asking with my rotary hat on because I'm wondering about having the duck race again this year. And you know, the, 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 there, so. the rules and, and, and once again, it, it takes very little to put together the parade. The fireworks we've already got scheduled because uh, we felt like you know everything that we're reading says we should be able to do fireworks without problem. That, that shouldn't be an issue. The parade, you know, I, I think it's something probably I'll put on the next select board agenda and talk to the select board about what you guys want to do. Yeah. It takes very little really planning. Um, to well, the people have floats, so they want to know so they can still float. Uh, yeah, you know, most people, they, they know they've done it for years and it doesn't take them too long to put it together. There's a lot of people that you know, they want to put their cars and everything else in the parades. It really, it, it's not a big organizational thing. Yeah. You know, the, all, the, all the real work is the day of. Um, right to July, um, but it's it's not hard to do, Eric. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, Bob. Hey, yeah, go ahead, Brian. I'd like to nominate Eric Dodge to learn how to do that. Yeah. <laughs> he already knows what the hat is being passed. I realize I'm not a board member, but I can second that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you can have Trisha attend when we start talking about Fourth of July, because I she is a world of ideas, integral, right. and she is in touch with members of the community and right. directors of SSA. Like she just be there for her ideas. We we were kind of waiting a little bit just to see how things, you know, we we okay. been very patient to say, you know, because we start putting things out too soon right now, and then things go south from from the governor's perspective. Right. You know, it could change everything. So we we've learned to be a little bit patient in this day and age of COVID. Uh, about trying to open things, but we we saw the Fourth of July. We scheduled and said, "This fireworks, you know, and it'll be easy." Uh, from everything we're reading, if you're so, even if you're social distance, wearing mask outside right now, once again, the majority of people have had the opportunity to get a vaccine by that point in time. Shouldn't be an issue. Parade, I think, is a different situation because you have a lot of people on the streets at that point in time. You know that because that's the only way to see the parade. But I think I should put that specifically on agenda um, for select board discussion for the next meeting. Okay. Um, and you know, um, as far as events, you know, I think Trisha hasn't scheduled any bands yet. Um, if we wanted to throw together something, I'm not going to speak for, her, but I'm sure if we've gone that far. But then, you know, I think there's a difference where you're asking a lot of people to congregate on the streets. There's a lot of effort from the police department to pull that off. And the highway department, because remember now we don't have any parking on Main Street and Bridge Street actually. We we stopped doing that. That would be Kevin's first experience of doing this, I think. Right. So, but you know, it takes off a little bit more effort mm -hmm. from them. But you know, for the PD, that's an all hands on deck event, I believe. And we, we need a, a lot of effort um, from the highway department to be able to do that as well. So. Just a little bit more organization. If we'll put it on the next agenda and let the board figure out what they want to do with the trade. Okay. All right, Gary. That's it. That's it. Yep. Okay. Judy. I want to thank Sarah Hyde for updating the website. Um, she's working on the fire department, I think, and then and working on other um, departments. It would be really sweet to be doing. And also, and Sarah Haskins, I may ask you to help because I'm kind of fading here. Um, so Tracy Wren contacted Dan because of the money coming into the, the state and the schools from the recovery, I think it's called, the Recovery Act. And um, when she heard that we weren't going to have a summer rec program, she reached out to Dan. So Tricia and, and Dan and Sarah and myself, I'm on the Parks and Rec Commission, um, look, are looking into trying to find a director. It'll be... If we can find a director, it'll be a very pared down program than what it has been in the past. So it's kind of, we're kind of holding it uh, in limbo till we can find a director. But Sarah, did you want to add anything? So um, the, the gym, we can't use the gym, but Tracy has offered, um, we can't use the high school gym that's traditionally been used, but um, Tracy said that uh, we could use the elementary school gym. But the, our main concern is finding somebody to um, be able to 
be a director ASAP because without that person to put together a program, um, there's really nobody that could run it for us. We're thinking of dovetailing with the, the summer tutoring program. So it would just be grades K to five and, um, or K to four, I think. Yeah, and, K to uh, four. Their program runs from like eight to two, and we would be then adding on some the after school care after the, the two o'clock time. So it'd be ours would run like 1.30 to 5.30. So it would help out the parents whose kids are attending that program and uh, might support them. So we finding a director is key. And so an ad's going in tomorrow. Well, actually, I think we got it. Did we get that out today, Sarah? We got it out yeah. a couple of places today. Um, yeah, so I posted I'm, it today. There's already chatter on Facebook. Good. Thank you for doing that. Is that it, Judy? I think that's it, yeah. Stay tuned. All right. Stay tuned. <laughs> Eric. Uh, just a reminder, the winter parking ban, we're talking about sweeping streets. Winter parking ban is still in effect until the 15th of May, correct? So give our highway guys a break. Get your cars off the street. We do not want to damage them, and we want the streets clean. So uh, please uh, park in your driveways or where we need to. Are you saying it's going to be another big snowstorm? I'll tell you what, Mother Nature's been uh, not nice this year. So it, it's delayed the sweeping of the streets. We're actually a couple weeks behind with that. And the only thing that would make it worse is when cars are parked overnight on our streets. It's just it's a, a real problem. Okay. Is that on our website? Yes. Okay. Yep. Well, you may have if they issue a ticket, I know about it. Okay. No good. Very good. Uh, oh, the only concern, I was going to ask about the uh, Oxbow bathrooms. I went down there and checked them out. I wondered when they were going to open or be done. Or... With Donnie on that, I think yeah, we, we're working on the finished plumbing right now. So I think the structures are pretty basically done. Um, so, and, and that's the thing. You, you know, part of the, uh, the the construction of that is that that's also going to be a Wi-Fi access point down there for us. We actually built that into the building to be able to do that. So I think the structures pretty much done. I know she's been working with the guy that, that volunteered to do the plumbing to get him the fixtures and all that other fun stuff. And I think we're pretty close to having that ready. Her goal is to have it open by mid-June. So I think she's on track by that. Which oh. will be about the time we start with the music series and, and some other things down there. By the ATV and informational meeting now. Exactly. Well, so. Is the Wi-Fi going to be accessible to anybody all the time? Um, I forget how we did it in the past. Really what we want the Wi-Fi is, is, is we can, I think, split it so that there's a public access piece of it. But if you go back to when we originally did this, we also wanted to be able to start putting up some security cameras so that we could link the cameras up to the PD so that we could monitor better. So that was the original intent of the Wi-Fi. We've had some repeaters down there before. It, it would be some Wi-Fi, but it, it'd be a limited Wi-Fi. In other words, we don't want people sitting down there watching movies. <laughs> You know, and needing up the bandwidth. The, the intent is to be able to, to support something that the town's doing, like a meeting, right. and you know, access for security cameras so the PD can keep a better idea, of, you know, eye on what's going on down there. Um, because we do have some issues down there on occasion, and security cameras were going to be a big part of helping the PD solve some of that problem. Right. Well, they can always be password protected too. Yeah, exactly. You know, so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's all I had. <clears throat> Next, old business. And we have any old business? Other business. Do we have any other business? Hearing none. This is Sarah both? Haskins. Can I just ahead, use? Sarah. Can I just use this plug to remind people that property taxes are due on May seventeenth? Um, the offices will still be closed to the public at that time, but you. You can use the drop box in front of the building and uh, just stick in a little sticky note if you want us to send you a receipt. Great. Thanks, Sarah. We don't want to forget about taxes. <laughs> How come Shelly made me pay mine a week or so ago? They're not due until 17. <laughs> you lost the Tetris. You made the check out to Shelly? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't look. Maybe she did. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye, Brian. Aye.
Eric, Kelly, Judy, Aye. Eric, Aye. motion is passed. We're adjourned.